Yes! I've been drinking, and um, I realized just before I got on stage that I just passed that point where you start to lose your train of thought a little bit, yeah. I can't really remember what I wanted to say or how I wanted to say it. So when things don't go well, just realize mission accomplished. I think that we've totally... I'm not even going to drink the, um, the, 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 what is this? What is this? It's tequila. Thank you. I had no idea what this was until just now. I've been drinking it the whole time. I just realized, I just, we're, let's drink it later. Let's, well, before the thing. I look good for 40, by the way, you guys. Huh? Give it up for me. Look good for 40. Too bad I'm 35. I, uh, look great for 40, though. Dare I say. I was the guy who raised his hand when David Perdue said, has anybody been in a black, uh, what is the thing called? Barbershop. Seriously, too much to drink. Um, I walked in by accident. You know the barbershop at Atlantic, uh, not Atlantic Station. There's a barbershop at Atlantic Station. Right here on Edgewood. You know what I'm talking about? There's, you know what Edgewood is? It's a place right here. It's with shops. There's a Best Buy. Barbershop, Edgewood. Anybody still with me? I walk in, black barbershop just so you know, in case you want to go there next time. And uh, I was like, oh, I am in the wrong place. <laughs> and then the guy who runs the thing uh, smiled at me, and I saw the grill, and I was like, oh, I'm in the right place. This is where I should be. <laughs> and I got a haircut, and it was awesome. And that's the end of racism for all time. Um, <laughs> what was I going to tell you? I'm... Uh, so 27 days ago, four, year, four years, 27 days ago, it's not a Lincoln speech. Uh, four years, 27 days ago, February 1st, 20, 2014 minus four, 10, I did comedy for the first time. I did comedy for the first time. It was on my grandmother's birthday. And 27 days later, on my birthday, she returned the gift and died. Um, way to get the last laugh, Grandma. I know what you're thinking. Selfish, I agree. That's pretty <laughs> shitty gift, Grandma. Uh, but good for her. Good on her. I do that joke twice a year <laughs> on her birthday and on my birthday. She, it's such a... What, who dies for... Like, it's like, what are you getting me for my birthday, Grandma? Blah. I'm like, what? I was there. I saw the life leave... All right, no, we're, it's too dark. Too dark, too dark. Love my grandma, she had a great sense of humor, as you can tell. I was married at the time when, um, when she passed, and then I got divorced a few months later, so she didn't get to celebrate with me that, uh, that going down. And uh, we had a, I'm Jewish, and I had a Jewish divorce, and a lot of people were like, what is a Jewish divorce? Is it not all the same for everybody? And I'm like, no, you know, in a Jewish marriage, you stomp on the glass, uh, at the end of it, and you say Mazel Tov. In a Jewish divorce, they make you put it back together, and that, and that is why most Jews do not get divorced. It takes a long time. I have a girlfriend now. It's nice. Yeah. It's, uh, that's her friend wooing in the back for support. Dare I say? I'll say it. I love her. So I'll, I'll say it. I do. Yeah. Look, she's got big tits. What's not to love? Let's be honest. Um. We get into fights sometimes. It's good. She made me go see Monuments Men recently. It's like, uh, I get it. You know, history remembers the winners, you know? 27 Yankees, 85 Bears, the Nazis, right? I, get, I, I know what you're thinking. Like, hey, they lost World War II, but they clearly won a place in our heart because we make movies about them nonstop. It's literally Zieg hailing movies about Nazis every year. This isn't going well. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Let's stick to that theme as I say this. Uh, where was I? There was something about a war. I, did, I think, seriously, I feel like we're married to World War II movies at this point, right? Like, I get it, you know, because America was a young country when we got into World War II. We hadn't been in a lot of wars, you know? We were like high school culturally, you know? With, and World War II had the biggest tits. They're like, oh, that is the only war I want to be in for the rest of my life, you know? You don't just marry the first war you're in, though, guys, you know? You knock her up, you have a couple little wars. Things don't go well. 
Now you're angry with her. You're fighting all the time. You start going out. You start going to other countries, having other wars. Cheap wars, you know? <laughs> She's like, I saw your texts. Who's Charlie? Like, it's nobody, baby. She's nobody. It's more of a conflict, really. It's not a war. <laughs> You get in trouble. You're gonna get in trouble with that, man. You can't marry the first one. Like, you're gonna, it's gonna be Thanksgiving, you know? You're gonna be stuck talking to Normandy, Uncle Normandy. It's not good. <laughs> then you realize, you, st you start, ah, oh, I fucked the joke up, I realized. <laughs> Just now. Just now I realized that. I went the whole route. There was a, you know, because I told you the joke. I practiced the joke. Why didn't you stop me? You should have stopped me and said, Wait, there's a thing you were supposed to do in the beginning. Because she's a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. You suck. Monuments Men is a shitty movie. It's a shitty movie about... Do you know? Has anybody seen this shitty movie? Anybody? Yeah, my girlfriend. Thank... Wow. Good job. It's... <laughs> It's about a bunch of guys who go to the front lines of World War II as the war is about to end to save the art. To save, they, President Roosevelt's like, to Clooney, he goes, you know, whatever, Clooney, let's just call him Hot Tits. Listen, uh, Hot Tits Clooney, is it worth risking men's lives for art? And he goes, I believe it is, sir. And I'm like, was it worth risking my three hours for this shitty fucking movie? <laughs> They're out of ideas. They're out of ideas. You know, and that's what happens when you marry a war. You, you, you get nagged all the time with the same stories. And you're like, I get it, the Jews, I get it. It's the same thing every time. Oh, we killed the Jews. All right, see, that would have worked so much better if I had set that up earlier. <laughs> then you, you know, it, it's been years. You've been with her. She's growing old, disgusting. She's ugly, really. You don't want to be around her anymore. And that's when you realize the only thing left to save in this relationship is the art. Uh. See? You see what happened there? <laughs> Proper practice, comedians. Uh, let's, let's just bail out of that. I can't bail out of it because the joke's over. I, that was all I had written, so bailing is really the wrong word. Let's move on to some other topic. Yeah, I got it. Uh, <laughs> that's it. We're drinking. I got one more joke. We'll get out of here. Hey, to everybody, thank you for celebrating my birthday. Thanks for coming to my birthday party. Hey, I'll be, I'm thinking about having cake and omelets at the Majestic later, if anybody wants to join. Huh? Salute. Yeah, disgusting. I'll get out on this. Oh, oh my God, I'm so drunk. My dad, he's one of those people that um, tries to teach me lessons all the time growing up, you know? He's one of those people who's always like, there's two types of people in this world. You know, and recently my car got impounded because the insurance card did not match the VIN number. And he goes, well, son, there's two types of people in this world. Those that make sure their insurance numbers match their VIN number and those that let their cars get impounded. And I was like, well, when you put it into two mutually exclusive groups like that, Dad, there are always two types of people in this world. And my dad is Russian. He doesn't actually talk like that. It's more like, there are two types of people in the world. <laughs> Boris and Natasha. And I was like, I see what you did there. It's a Bullwinkle joke. I like it. And I was at, the, <laughs> I was at the, the police station paying for the car. And the guy, this guy behind me is like, hey, man, what you doing here, man? What you here for? And I'm like, well, car got impounded. I'm here to pay it off. And then we just stared at each other in silence, not unlike this one. And I realized, wow, there are two types of people in this world those who ask you questions because they're genuinely curious about your life and those who just ask you questions because they want you to ask and reciprocate. And I was like, okay, what are you doing here? And he's like, man, cops took my cell phone. Probably for the best, though. I got four baby mamas. You do the math. And I was like, that is not how you end a sentence like that. <laughs> do the math? Do the math? Okay. I will do the math. Let's see. Uh, four baby mamas plus undisclosed amount of babies <laughs> divided by missing cell phone equals you're a terrible father. <laughs> and that's when I realized there are two types of people in this world. Those who think there are two types of people in this world and those that can do the math.
That's my time. Thanks a lot.